Hey, I'm NipahFX, but you can call me Nikolai, and today it's gonna be you, me, and all these gatherers. What are gatherers? How do they work? And why are they the biggest addition to Java streams ever? Check out the latest Inside Java Newscast to get answers to those questions. In this video, we're just gonna implement a bunch of them, namely these. So, let's get going. So what we have here uh, is a list of letters as input, and then we occasionally need a predicate. And as a predicate, I'm using this thing, which casts the, the character to an int and then checks whether it's even. So that's an even letter. Doesn't make sense. Never mind, it works. And uh, as a demo, we have like this little stream here that takes the letters, filters by even, turns it into a list, and then uses this handy combination of text blocks and string templates to create some output. Now let's run this. And what do we get? Uh, we get this, which is what I expected. Now let's start putting gatherers here as an intermediate operation. And we'll start with the gatherer that does nothing. Oops. So we'll start uh, public static gatherer. Oh, we need a type parameter. And then with gatherers, you'll often have the first argument is the type argument is what comes in. The second one is the accumulator, the state, but we're not gonna have any, we're not gonna uh, expose that publicly. So we're gonna put a question mark there and then do nothing, you know, changes nothing. Uh, so we have the same output type. And now we need an integrator and this one has ATR. Sorry, but A is the state is gonna be void. T and T here as parameters. And then it just does nothing. It takes the element and passes it downstream. So uh, downstream push the element. There we go. Oh, need to return true so the stream can continue. And that's that. Now return a gatherer of the integrator. And we should be done. Let's see. There you go. A transparent gatherer just passes everything on. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. So again, the only thing we need here is an integrator. So let's start creating the integrator. Um, again, we're not having state. So the first one is void, but this time we're mapping from T to R. And uh, that's gonna be pretty simple as well. We just need to apply the function to the element that we get. And then we pass that, fun that element downstream. Now let's apply this and let's map, say, from the letter to, I don't, I don't mind. Uh, let's say we duplicate the letter. And that works. There we go. That's a simple map. Another stateless function that we can easily implement as a filter. So let's re-implement filter as a gatherer. The filter does not change the type, so we only need the element type. And so the gatherer will be of type T question mark T. We're going to come to that question mark uh, later. So this integrator maps from T to T. So no type change here. And clearly what we need to do is we need to apply the filter. So we apply the filter to the element. And this decides whether we want to pass it on. And if we do want to pass it on, we just, you know, pass it downstream. And again, we turn true because we want to uh, want to process more elements after this. And now we turn this into a gatherer. So let's filter is even. And again, works like a charm. Nice. Okay. So what's the what's the next one? Oh, this is a little bit more interesting. So this one is a combination of a flat map and a predicate. And the idea here is that you have elements of one type, and if a certain condition is met, you want to explode this into a bunch of elements, but still of the same type. You cannot change the type like as you would with the regular flat map, because, you know, then the, the mapped elements type and the original elements that did not pass the predicate, they, it wouldn't fit, right? So you have to flat map to the same type, but you can still turn one element into a bunch of elements. So this is still TT, because while the integrator is going to emit more than one element, it's still gonna emit them as individual elements. It's not gonna map a T to a list of T, it's gonna map a T to a T and then another one and then another one. So that's why it's still an integrator from T to T, so to speak. So this one's interesting. If we want to expand, now we need to apply this mapper function and then we need to pass each element on. So let's do that. Um, if we expand, we take the mapper 
and we apply it to the element. And what we now have is a stream. And on the stream, there's a for each. And now we need a consumer. And downstream push happens to be a consumer. And otherwise, we will be just uh, downstream the element as is, unchanged. Okay, now let's try this with saying um, flat map if... So yeah, if it's even, what do we do? If it's even, let's say we take a letter and we turn it into a stream of two letters. So we duplicate the letter. But we don't duplicate it, you know, by concatenating it. We just have it in the stream twice then, ideally. Oh, there we go. So B got turned into BB and D is also even apparently. And then C is odd. So we get a single C and E is also odd. So we get a single E. Oh yeah, A also odd, right? So yeah, that makes sense. So that worked. Now let's start um, take while including, right, yeah, yeah. Now this is also one uh, that we need, don't need state for yet, but this is an interesting one. Now let me talk a little, through this a little bit. Let's say you have a stream, like a stream of log messages, for example, and all log messages have a level, right? And that what you can do with drop while, you can say drop all the log messages um, while they are not a warning or worse. So you're dropping all, I don't know, debug and trace and info messages. That's great. So you drop everything that is not at least a warning. So the first warning then appears. And because it's a drop while and not a filter, everything that comes after also appears. Now say we want to go from the first warning to the first error. So we might think we do drop while it's not yet a warning and then take while it is what? Not an error? Because if we take while it's not an error, then the error itself doesn't appear. But if we take while and we go one above error, which I think is fatal, then all the errors are in and we don't stop after the first error. The problem with take while is in this specific scenario, and generally it works, right? But in this specific scenario, the issue with take while is that it doesn't include the element that made the state change, that changed from, oh, now this is the one that violates the predicate. And, you know, sometimes that sucks. And you can build something weird with, uh, with stateful predicates. And it's, it's really horrible and it's also not 100% reliable. And now we can build something like this. So let's do that. It's actually really easy with the, with the gather API. So we take while the predicate is true. So let's test that first. Okay, that part is easy. As long as the predicate is passed, uh, we push the element downstream and then we say return true, uh, where uh, we wanna accept more elements here. But otherwise, and now comes the interesting part, we still downstream the element, but we're gonna say, but after this one, we're done. So this is the last one. So really, we always downstream the element, right? We always do that because we rely on once we return false, we'll not be fed more elements. So that means we can refactor this. We can easily just say, okay, let's um, push this downstream every time. And then here, what we do is we just uh, return pass on. So let's return pass on, which at that point really didn't, doesn't have a lot of meaning anymore. So we should be able to inline, oops, inline this. There we go. So that should work. Um, so we're gonna say gather and then here we're gonna say take while including it's even. So what are we expecting here? We know that the first one is odd and that the second one is even. So we expect a B to show up, but not D and the rest. Do we get this result? Uh, no, we don't. This seems to be like the take while behavior. Let's see, we can quickly try. We can say uh, take while is even. Oh. Welcome to live debugging. Uh, what is... Let's just make sure that we understand this correctly. A is... Uh, a is odd. Okay. We take while... Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm... I'm so yeah, see? It does work. <laughs> we take while it's even. A is not even, so that immediately gets dropped. Uh, we can say negate here. And then we should see... Now we take while things are odd. 
which includes A, but does not include B. So now we get an A, but not a B. Right, so the code is correct, just uh, my test case was wrong. If we can uh, insultingly call this system of print line thing here a test case. So let's go with is even negate. And now we get AB, right? So B fails this, but it's still included in the stream. But everything after is not. So with this, we can uh, take while including until it's an error. Okay, nice. So from now on, we need a state. Let's start with limit, which is pretty simple. Um, again, even though we do have a state, we're not gonna expose it. So we always, like much, much like collectors do, eh, we're gonna return a question mark here, right? So even though we do have a state, uh, we're not gonna expose it because there's no reason for the outside world to know that we have a state. Okay, so what would the state be? We need to count the index that we're at. So atomic integer is a mutable counter, right? Oh, sorry, the state needs to be mutable. So atomic integer, we don't care about the atomic. It, we just care about the fact that we can get an increment integers here. So let's do that. Let's say we have a supplier. That's what, um, an in, that's what this is of atomic integer. That's what, a, sorry, what an initializer is that creates the state. Supply of atomic integer as uh, the initializer and that's very easily just atomic integer new. There we go. Okay, just create one. And now the integrator becomes a little bit more interesting because now it actually has state. It gets an atomic integer and we return when we map a t to a t. Okay, so now we need to figure out what index we're at. Uh, that's pretty easy. We can just take the state object and say um, get and then increment, right? We want to get the current one and then we want to increment for the next one. Uh, get an increment. So that's the current index. Current index. And then we say, well, if the current index is smaller than the number of elements, then we're good, right? Then we want to push the element downstream. And then what we return, if we return true, this works, but we get past every element. We're only gonna, sub we're only gonna emit the correct elements, only the first ones, but we're still gonna get all of them if we say return true here, so we shouldn't, right? We should say, okay, we know it, that will be done, um, and so we should at some point return false. And we can actually say, uh, we can return false here. We could, do, we could do an else, that would work. We can say, okay, otherwise we return false. Um, oh, well, return, right? That works. But then after the last element that was within the limit, we still get past the next element. And you know, that could be a costly operation. Maybe somebody needs to do a flat map, a costly flat map on the previous element to give us the next element. So that's also necessary. What we can do is we can just say, okay, return, because we know what the limit is, right? We know if the current index plus one, that would be the next one, whether that is below the number of elements. And if it is, we're good. And if it isn't, that would mean, um, it would not be accepted anyway. Okay, now we need to do off sequential from more correctly. Uh, yes. So let's talk about sequentiality. What I'm doing here with limit that's very obvious, but also that's true for much of what comes later. I'm uh, this the logic that I build will only work for sequential streams. If you parallelize them, everything's out the window. Things get much more complicated. You have to make sure that the operation works on individual portions of the stream. And then you have to combine state. And you can do this clearly for some of the operations at least, but we're not going to do that here. Uh, that just takes a lot more, more time and digging deeper. So for now, let's just assume everything is, is, is sequential. And that means for us here, uh, we create gatherer off sequential and then we pass the initializer. Oops, uh, pass the initializer and the integrator. And we're done. And now let's try this. Let's say we want to limit this to three. So now we're getting ABD, I hope. There we go. There's ABD. Nice. Increasing is a fun one. What we're doing here is we're getting comparators. We're getting a comparator and we try to find no, we try to find. We'll only emit elements that are larger than every element we've seen so far. So if you have a sequence of numbers that fluctuates, you will only get the high points. You will always get the numbers that like on this, on this upward curve. I'm not sure whether I'm pointing the right direction. It, it doesn't matter. You'll see. <laughs> the state that we'd use here, we need to figure out what's the largest element so far 
uh, and then we can put that into an atomic reference. Once again, it's not about atomicity, it's just about having a mutable container for an object. Okay, so now we have the largest element, and now we just use the comparator to figure out whether the new one is larger. Now, if you can not remember which way comparator works, consider there would be a minus here. That's that's how I remember. So, it, it, if you say compare to, A compared to B, or if you say comparator, oops, this is of course wrong. Uh, there you go. If you say A compared to B, or you say comparator compare A comma B, you're basically saying A minus B. And if A minus B is larger than zero, then this element was larger. Okay, cool, that is larger. Now, uh, the keen eyed made a spot a problem here, and that is initially this contains null, and the comparator is not gonna like this. So we're gonna have to do um, a null check here. We have to say largest is, uh, right, now if largest is null, then the element is definitely larger anyway. So we do this. And of course, we need to set the, the largest element to the stream now. The new largest element. And we turn true because, you know, this is not an operation that ends at this point. Gather limit. What did we just build? Ah, increasing. Right. And the comparator would be... Uh, uh, comparator dot natural order, right? That should work for strings. Uh, but it doesn't... What do we get, IntelliJ? What are you complaining about? What can be applied to general order? Do I have to put a string here? Oh yeah, okay, there we go. Let's run this. And that works, right? A, clearly the first one. B is larger, D is larger. B gets filtered out because it's smaller than D. C is smaller than D. F hits larger than D, and then E is filtered out again. Looks good. Okay, now let's do another one. Let's uh, assume we have numbers, which we don't here, for simplicity's sake. Let's assume we have numbers, ints, and we want to uh, compute a running average. And the initial state um, is again zero, but we need to be able to, to mutate it. Well, then we have to do a lot of math if it's just a single number. Maybe at this point it would be simpler to have a little mutable container. Sure, let's write a local class. So we're going to keep using this as our state. And now you can see why you wouldn't want to export this, right? Uh, this is just local. We don't, we don't need anybody to know this, what we're doing here, which is very ugly. So what you need to do is we need to uh, increase the sum and increase uh, the counter that we have and then divide the sum by the counter and emit that as an element. So first we update the state. Uh, we say state sum is plus equals to the element. Oop. And then we say state dot count is one larger. Now, if we just do state sum divided by state count, uh, yeah, IntelliJ points it out, we get a long division and this is rounded. So we need to cast one of them to double. So let's put a double here. Let's give it a go. <whistles> Gather, right. So first of all, we need to map, right? We need integers. Uh, so let's map to, oh my God. In case you wonder why my typing is so horrible. It is always horrible, but particularly horrible if I can't look down because my mic is in the way. I'll just move things around a bit, probably. Or maybe I should sit more upright. Ugh, that's also better. Yes, that's better. Okay, now we can do a running average. Let's see what we get. So we were already 65, 50, sorry, 56 is A. I know that much. Uh, and then B is one higher, 66. So th that would be the middle of them. That makes sense. I'm not going to test the rest. I'm sure the math works out somehow. Looks good at least. Good enough for me. Okay, sliding window. That's also a nice one. The idea here is that you say, um, I want three. I, I want to turn a stream of elements into a stream of groups, but this is not like the first three and then the next three and the next three. We're going to do that next. Oh, you know what? Why not do that first? Let's start with fixed groups. That's a little bit more... Um, 
conceptually easier at least. Okay, so now we're gonna turn a stream of elements into a stream of groups where we say the first and the next and the next. And here come another important uh, thing comes in and we're gonna, I'm gonna let it fail first so we see why it's important. Okay, let's start with writing the method out. A state, we're just gonna use an array list. And the idea is that we put each element into the array list and when we reach the right size, we're gonna create an immutable copy, put that downstream and clear the array list for the next computation, for the next collection. So we add the element and then we have to check whether it's the right size. So if state size is the intended size and now we can do the thing. So this is our group and we're gonna downstream the group. So, um, and then we also need to steer clear the state, state.clear. And I think that should be that, all right? Uh, we always wanna get more elements and I'll return a gatherer. And then we're gonna see it fail. I'm wondering whether somebody already knows why it fails. Maybe pause the video here and think about this. What could go wrong here? Why, why will this not quite work out? Okay, last chance. Why does it fail? Where'd the E go? So A, B, C, D, B, C, F. That makes sense, right? A, B, D, B, C, F. What, what's up with the E? Ah, this is an interesting one. We are still filling the last group. While we're processing E, we just put that into an empty list. And so, the where is it? This check wasn't true. And so we didn't emit the group, which makes sense in that situation, but does not make sense overall. We need something to, to run after this, which is actually available. It's called a finisher. Okay, so a finisher is not Serial. Uh, well, also Serial is the finisher, but uh, that's not what this is about. Uh, this is about finishing the stream or the gather operation rather. A by consumer takes the state and it takes the downstream. Uh, do, 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 I think it was new extends. List of T, sorry, super. I think that's what the downstream looks like. Um, that's the finisher. And so this one. It's gonna be state and downstream. Right, and what we do here is we just repeat this operation. This method gets called. Uh, let's just say, let's just print the state. And now we need to put it here. Right, okay, so the times did line up. Let's repeat, we should see a um, spurious E here. Right, so the state, we get called, the last state, the last array list that we put an E in, that's gonna arrive here. And now we're printing it, right, so we see the E. And yes, by the way, I'm aware of breakpoints. Don't tell me in the comments. Um, right, so what we just do now is, we just repeat the copy here, and we just push this downstream. So let's just do this. And now we get the last group being E. And this is crucial because there were a bunch of these operations that you could kind of build if you were like doing some fancy thing with like flat map operations or map operations. There were some options that you had to build some of these. But this is a big thing that was missing. The fact to somehow figure out, oh, I'm done now. I need to do this one extra step. That's really important. Okay, now let's do the sliding window. The sliding window is kind of similar, but it's different in the sense that we only want to see, let's say, we always see the current element and the last two elements, and that moves, right? So the list, it's not, it's not individual groups, well, it is individual groups, but they're not distinct, um, or disjunct, I think is the term for a set. What I'm trying to say, you probably know what I'm trying to say. If you have one, two, three, four, five, and you do a sliding window, the first group would be one, two, three, and the next one would be two, three, four, and the next one would be three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm gonna copy all of this, and then we're gonna see where this gets us. Gets us. Yeah. Okay, the big difference is here. 
we don't just add an element, we also remove one. And we need to do this in the right order. Uh, we could argue which way the sliding window should work, whether the new element should be first or last. I'm going to ignore that. And I'm going to say here, um, add first, and then also state remove last. But we only remove this, by the way, sequence collections. Just makes this so much easier. But I'm only going to remove the last element. Uh, if the size is already here, right? It's so only if we reach the right size do we remove the element. And then I think we just do this. We never clear the state. We just do this, right? We add the element. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. well, seems about right. Do we need a finisher? Yeah, I don't think we need a finisher because we remove, uh, we, we uh, emit every list as we find it. I don't think we need a finisher. Let's do a sliding window of size three. Eh. Okay, so we get A, B, A. Oh, right. Uh, size is not an equal set. Should, should be a larger check. I was confused by why are they only of size two. But the reason for that is that... Where were we? Oh, we did quite a lot already. This needs to be a larger. Oh, no, wait. That's the wrong one. That needs to be a larger. Yikes. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. So A and then B is the newest one and A is the one before. And then now D is the newest one and B A is the ones before. And now we start to cycle. I mean, B staying off length three. Good. Now, if you do not want to have these two here, you have to build things a little bit differently. You have to make... Uh, you cannot always push it downstream. You have to check whether we are of the right size. But if you do that, then you might end up with a stream of two elements and a sliding window of three, which never emits a sliding window. So, you know, then you need a finisher. Depends on the logic that you want to build here. Let's find the next one. Oh, yeah. Let's sort. Now, this is a funny one. <laughs> um, so, it's funny because how would you sort? Right? You can't sort life. You can't receive an element and figure out where it goes into the into the completely sorted stream and then emit it at that position. That like the whole concept doesn't make sense, right? Like even if you know by taking an element what position in the final stream it belongs to, which you can't un unless you've seen all of them. But even if you would know that, then you still can't say okay, emit this as element at index ten and emit the last one as and the next one as you know in element at index two. It's like nope, doesn't work. So what we're going to do instead is. Uh, we're going to collect, just just collect all the elements. And then in the finalizer, we're going to do all the work where we sort and then emit all the elements, which is kind of funky. Let's do that. Wondering, do we even need state here? Oh, yeah, clear, sure, surely we need state to collect all the elements. Okay, let's do this. This makes me think, why did I put array list everywhere? Why not just list? So you would just take the state, I mean, that's the list, right? And add the element, and that's it. We're not even gonna emit every, anything. So downstream is unused. There you go. Uh, <laughs> actually before, look, yeah, yeah, we can do this here too. We had a bunch of unused variables, right? Where it is, where is it? Uh, all of them, these are all unused, right? So we can now express that, that we don't need this one, which makes it easier to read. Oh, no, this one we need. Okay, from here on we started building state, 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 state. Okay, we don't need downstream, which is kind of surprising, but anyway. And because I'm too lazy to type this out, I'm going to poppy, poppy paste it. Ay ay ay. If you watch my streams, I, I live stream on Twitch uh, about once a week if I get to it. Uh, Twitch.tv slash NipaFX. Uh, smooth. When I live stream, it's... It's at least as bad. Like typing is not my thing. Specifically, we, just like I type too much text into the code nowadays. But typing text also, I'm just bad at typing. Okay, let's just let's just leave it there. I'm bad at typing. So do what do we do here? Uh, we take uh, the we take the list and we sort it. Um, there we go. We're passing the comparator. And then we take the sorted list and for each element we're just gonna pass it downstream. Hey, let's run this.
And we're just gonna take the string comparator, which was what? Comparator string natural order. Okay, run this. Drum roll. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I was I was shocked for a second because it starts like the other stream and it ends like almost ends like the other stream. But not quite. A B B C D F. It works. And here you can also see, I mean. The, in, the, the intermediate operations in the Java Stream API are not implemented as gatherers, and I doubt that they will be re-implemented as gatherers. Maybe, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. But either way, they can be implemented as gatherers, clearly. But the funny thing is, this is essentially what the, what the uh, stream implementation of Sorted also does. It just collects during the streaming all the state, and that's why it's such a large, stateful um, operation. Because it needs to collect all that state, and then at the end, it can start running through the state to emit to the next stage. Okay, last one, increasing sequences. That was one that I had put as homework on the Inside Java Newscast video. And the idea here is that when you get this sequence, you start A, B, D, that is increasing. Let's make this one sequence. B, C, F is also increasing. Let's make this another, the next sequence. And then E is a new sequence, right? So we go up in, uh, so each subsequence is in increasing order, which in this case happens to be two times three uh, groups of type of length three. So just for fun, let's put, let's switch this around a bit uh, by doing this. And now we get A, B, D, then C, because B is smaller again, and then B, F, and then E at the end. Okay. Can I steal the code from somewhere? Because I'm getting tired of typing. Okay, let's, let's modify increasing. Let's start with increasing sequences. And sorry, let's start with increasing and let's turn that into increasing sequences. We also get a comparator, but the gatherer will return lists of T, which will now get us some compile errors. Um, we do need to collect lists though. Yeah, we need to collect lists here. So the supplier will be more like this one. So we get a list of T here and we emit a list of T. And now how do we do this? Um, what is the largest element? The largest element is the last element in the list. So we're going to check whether state is empty. And if it is, um, oh, do we just need a Boolean. I think we just need a Boolean here actually. And that just boolean is largest. Or is in sequence. Let's call it is in sequence. Is the current element still in this increasing sequence? Uh, that is definitely the case if the list is empty. And if it's not, if it's empty, or otherwise this, uh, the comparator needs to compare the new element with the current largest element and the current largest element, the current subsequence is the get last element of the list. Okay. And this needs to be, if this is larger than zero, I mean, we could do larger or equal to whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, good. And no, let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's remove this. Now, if we are, if this is in sequence, then it's very simple. We just need to add it to the state. We just need to put it into the state at the end though. So we're gonna add the element at the end there. And otherwise, now we need to do stuff. Now we need to emit a new group because now we know that the current element broke the sequence. It's it's lower again. Okay, that should be straightforward. It's basically uh, the stuff that we did here. So the stuff that I think just deleted, is that the same stuff? Take the state, take create a copy, push it downstream, clear the list. That's all good. We always keep coding. No, sorry, always keep uh, uh, consuming more elements. But we need a finisher because again, the last group will be missing. Do we even need to try this? No, you trust me, right? If you figured this out better, you don't trust me. You understood what I explained. So you know that we need a finisher here. Uh, let's take the downstream state. No, that's bullshit though. That is bullshit. This is what we need. Okay, 
We take a list, create a copy, push it downstream. That's the last group. Then we are done. We just need to put the finisher here. Is there like code repetition warning or something? Duplicated code from five lines long. Really? Yes, I think don't. Duplication is not that bad. Okay, let's see where that works. Uh, no, because we didn't actually put it here. Uh, so let's say increasing sequences. Oh, beautiful, except the C is missing and the E too. <laughs> so beautiful, but it didn't work quite. Okay, let's, so let's figure this out. Uh, ABD that worked and then something is wrong with this if case here, right? So let's check this out. Oh, uh, that was a doorbell. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's finish this. Um, what's the mistake we're making? I, I, th I had an epiphany right before I left. Um, yeah. So what I'm wondering is, uh, the else branch should also do this. That's probably, that's, that's that seems buggy. But it's, I would expect it the other way around, to be buggy the other way around. Uh, if it's in sequence, I add it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, if it's not in sequence, I need to add it after this one zone. Okay. Right, so and now again we can uh, improve the code. We can just say put this here and we can say if it's not in sequence, do uh, the stuff. I think now it should work. Okay, there we go. That was that. Uh, looks like it's good. Right, so yeah, so that's gather the, yeah, that is gatherers. Um, I'm super looking forward to having that. I use the stream pipeline, sorry, stream API a lot. And I often run into the situation, so I feel like, ah, this answer, what, oft, what does often mean? It's not like every stream pipeline that I write. But, you know, on a day of coding, I run into this, like, maybe once or twice. And it's not, it's not like there's a gazillion more operations that I need, although maybe there could be. Um, I just feel like it's like a handful or something. But this is much better than getting this handful of um, methods on the stream API, because what we get here is... You know all the methods we want we can now do every operation that we want as intermediate operation even if it's just like useful in this one specific stream pipeline you can still do this i mean the gatherer api is not it's like collectors it's not immediately obvious but once you've used it a bit and you understood the building blocks it's actually quite simple and you've seen that right like you know there was like what five minute explainer in the inside java newscast and now we've used it a bunch and i feel already at home with it um so yeah that's pretty cool hope you give that a try leave a subscribe and do a thumbs up and follow the comments you know you, you do the youtube stuff <laughs> i'll see you around so long